Hey everyone, uh, before I get into this video, I just wanna say thank you because we finally hit thousand subscribers. I'm glad everyone's finding value in these videos and I'm happy to make more of them. I, I find it kind of fun. So thank you so much for subscribing and supporting the channel. If you're not subscribed, please do consider doing so. And uh, if you have any suggestions for future videos, uh, I'm all ears, so just leave your comments below. In this video, I kind of want to go over VS Code and what I use. I got some questions in a couple comment sections regarding the theme I use for VS Code. I figured I might as well go over the theme and extensions, uh, some key mappings and a couple user snippets I have and just make a video out of it. So let me just open a project here. So this is a multi-step form project that I just recorded and it's uh, freshly opened. You can see that my theme is well, it is what it is. I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, before I get started, I just want to say that the I'm not one to really modify text editors too much, but the one thing I always do with VS Code is limit the amount of sidebar things here. I don't like it when it's cluttered. And so I just use Command Shift X to open the extensions part. Immediately, you can see I'm using the community material theme. I mean, you can't see, but you see I have it installed. If I go into my themes here, I'm using the community material theme Pale Knight. There's a whole bunch of them. I encourage you to try them out. Uh, if I had to use a different one, it would probably be the theme ocean high contrast, but this just seems a little dark for me. This one's okay. But I used I use Pale Knight because it just seems to work the best on my monitor and it kind of matches everything. And I, I like that it's easy on the eyes and that the syntax highlighting is pretty cool. So uh, that's what I use, community material theme. All links will be below uh, in the description in a blog post. I'm just gonna list everything in one big blog post for, for you to check out. And uh, now let's go through the extensions. So uh, I'd say the two most important extensions I have are PHP and Telefence. It would take a long time to go through everything that this does, but I use a lot of the premium features at work uh, for interfaces and abstract classes, stuff like that. And also the code completion is great. I feel like in a lot of ways, PHP and Telefence bridges the gap between VS Code and PHP Storm. And similarly, Vitor does the same thing for Vue. So I use this for Vue mostly at work because um, we use Vue and Inertia there. I don't really do much of that at home, but this is also great. I do recommend this. While we're on the topic of IntelliSense, Tailwind CSS IntelliSense is really great. And I could actually show you a demo. You could see in this file here that it's actually showing the colors of what we're using. And so if I wanted to make this text blue, I could pick a shade this way. Of course, it's going to kind of uh, underline it saying that you already set a text color, so you can't do it twice. Makes sense. But it is pretty cool. Um, I also use the PHP namespace resolver. And in a lot of tutorials, I'll say make sure that's imported or else it won't work. Because behind the scenes, I'm actually just hitting the, the correct keys automatically, not thinking about it and already importing stuff. I can show you how this works. So in the web file, I have this create user form uh, component here. If I remove the import, I click here and hit control option I, it'll import it automatically. But that's because it's only one class available for import. If I do something like user and hit control option I, it'll give me the option of either one of these because they're both available. I just select which one I want and it does it. This is pretty handy, especially if you're working on like different controllers and stuff, you're creating controllers. It's just really nice to just be able to import automatically uh, or, or have the selection of what you want to import. Uh, it's, it's quite simple, but it's really, really great tool. Uh, similarly, something else that's simple is Laravel go to view. This one is really, really nice is by coding you. For example, if you're in a live wire component, it's really annoying to have to like manually go find this if you just want to go see the template. Now I can just command click. It'll go straight to the template. Kind of save me time. I like that. Uh, it'll work for blade templates from controllers and, and live wire stuff. Really great, really simple. I do recommend installing that. And this one, Better PHP Unit by Caleb Porzio. It's uh, Caleb is the creator of Livewire. This is such a great extension if you write tests a lot. Uh, let me show you. So if I open registration test, I have my key mapping set, so if I hit Command KR, it'll run this test, which my cursor is in. And if I run Command KF, it'll run both tests or all tests within the file. And I'm not one to actually use uh, the terminal built into VS Code because I don't like how much screen real estate it takes. Typically, I use iTerm, but in the case of tests, we at work we do a lot of TDD, test-driven development and it seems to really speed things up if you could just see the result of your test right away within VS Code. And so I use that. 
Uh, of course, if you run a test, you can just close the terminal after with command J. So that's great. I think that covers everything except for the git stuff. So I have uh, for git related stuff when you're working on a team, I have git lens and open in GitHub. Git lens is really powerful for its git blame feature. So let me show you this. If I toggle the file blame, I can see what was committed when, like which lines and to which commits they belong to, who committed, how long ago. This is not so much for blaming people for stuff like the name suggests, but it's more for uh, if you're writing something and you, you, you're confused about what it does, you can check who wrote it and then ask them. It's, it's a really just great way to kind of stay on track and like not waste time trying to figure stuff out when you can just ask someone for, for a little bit of clarification. And it's also nice that you can see who wrote what just by clicking through on the lines. Uh, I'm also a fan of the open in GitHub. This is really great, especially if you're, you're part of your team or your full team uh, is remote like I had in the past. If you click a line and, and if you want to um, ask someone about something, let's just say you want to ask someone about the submit method, uh, they're remote or you're remote and you want to just send them this line through Slack, you can do command GC, which I have a key mapping for. It'll let you pick your latest, your current or latest uh, branch or from the latest commit, I believe, and it'll let you copy that link. Uh, alternatively, I've also mapped command GO, and that'll give you the same selection, but it'll open in your browser. And it'll actually, what's really cool is it'll actually open on the line that you've selected inside your editor. Um, this is just such a great tool because you can copy the line or copy the, the link, um, paste it right into Slack and ask your question. It's amazing. That's pretty much it for the extensions. I don't really have much else to share there. I also have this VS Code printing one here that just prints off code, but that's more for tutorials. I just Sometimes I'll print off a page and keep it beside me just so I have something to reference. Um, some of the key mappings I have, I'm not sure which ones exist within VS Code when you just first install it and what I map myself. I think Command Shift E for opening the Explorer is the one that exists within VS Code by default. Um, I've mapped, I frequently run into the situation where I'm switching projects or, or branches and I kind of want a fresh start in my editor. I don't want so much clutter. And so what I'll do is I'll actually just uh, use Command KW to close everything in my editor. And then also Command Shift E to open the Explorer, Command Shift A to collapse everything. So let me show you again. If I hit Command Shift A, it'll close everything. It'll collapse all the directories within uh, the Explorer. And so this is a really great way to clean everything up when you're just kind of switching. And also just like Chrome, you can use Command Shift T. I think this is built in as well, like default, uh, to reopen a file you just closed. So Command sh So if I close that file, I can use Command Shift T to reopen it. Um, I do also use the control one and two or one through nine to kind of switch files. Uh, I guess the idea is to use the mouse as little as possible when you're within VS Code. It's kind of just faster to stay on the keyboard. And once you do get used to it, it's way easier uh, to just stay on the keyboard. I also use command D a lot within uh, some of the Tailwind tutorials and that's just multi-cursor. So you can just replace stuff at once. Whoops, multi-cursor. Those are pretty much the only ones I use. I'm sure I have some others, but these are the ones probably worth mentioning that people don't really know that much about. Uh, as far as user snippets go, if you're not familiar, you can create these snippets that you can then reuse in your code. Um, and if I type at func or function, it'll create a public function kind of template for me within whatever class I'm in. So if I go into the user and I want to create a method quickly, I can just do at, at function create a public function, name it, hit tab, it'll go to the parameters, params, hit tab, and go to the body of the function, and then do whatever I want. It's a, it's a pretty fast way to create stuff. Also, I also have a test one, so test code snippets. This one will tab, first tab into the name, and then tab into the body of the test. So if I go to example test, and I just wanna create a sec secondary, or a second test, I can do at test, and I can make this one test example two. Oh, I'll just test example. And within here, I could do this, assert true, true, and run it. And you can see that it works, so that's great. I can run the whole file. 
and both tests are tested and they both pass. So that's kind of my VS Code setup. I hope that was somewhat helpful. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for a thousand subscribers. I think we're currently almost at 1,050. If you have any suggestions for uh, future videos or anything else you want to, you want me to make videos about or have questions about, please leave them below. Uh, I'm going to do my best to kind of answer everyone. So thank you for watching and I, I'll see you in the next video.